Hello and welcome to another great day here on The Jet Set. We have a packed show for you today. Travel writer and former Miss America contestant Kate Michael joins us to talk about her adventures. And I've got the travel headlines that have us talking. All of this and so much more is about to take off right here on The Jet Set. Welcome aboard. Bobby Lori and Nikki Noya have your ticket to travel, food, fitness, and everything you need for an on-the-go lifestyle. Grab your boarding pass. It's time to Jet Set. It's time again to wade into the waters of travel news on Here's This, powered by thejetset.com. Once again, an American abroad has managed to astonish local authorities and appall the public by endangering the integrity of one of Italy's national architectural treasures. Oh, come on. <laughs> this time it was the centuries old Point Vecchio, a UNESCO World Heritage Site, which spans the narrowest section of the Arno River mm -hmm. in the timeless city of Florence. What did they do? <laughs> An unnamed U.S. tourist, oh, Nicky, we need to find his name, mm. identified only as a 34-year-old man from California, was fined 500 euro for driving across the pedestrianized covered bridge in a <laughs> rented car. Part How? <laughs> How could you drive on that bridge? Go, proceed. <laughs> the outrage. <laughs> Part of the penalty was for driving without an international driver's license, according to a statement released by the city of Florence's press office. I never really realized that you need an international driver's license. You do. You should watch the Jet Set and I, find out information on I the know. show. I mean, how many times have I driven in another country without one? <laughs> So many times. <laughs> the offender told local law enforcement that he was looking for a place to park and had not realized that he had driven onto the famous <laughs> medieval era footbridge. And on any given day, the bridge is typically bustling with pedestrian traffic as people observe the ancient stonework and visit the shops that line the interior of the 98 foot long enclosed overpass. Here's what happened. He's driving around without his international license. Oh, just go here. Like historic thing. I don't know how Historic he got, thing. I don't know he got, how he even got the car though onto it. It must have been like a smart car. I don't know, but and he's like, oh, I better keep going. Can't reverse now, and just <laughs> went. Power on. through. Oh my god. Just how close your eyes and it didn't god. happen. Like <laughs> hell, Mary. <laughs> I mean. Oh. Yeah. That's terrible. But also, it's that would be really dangerous because it's packed. It's not big. It's really packed. There's a lot of people walking. You have all those cute shops. Yeah. Along there, I don't understand how he even I don't know. got it. I, I still never really understood the whole international driver's license thing. Because like, what do you do? You have to just get it translated into a, another document. So you're like, look, I, it's legal for me to drive here, so I guess it's legal for me there. Well, I feel like you do that when you go to rent the actual said car while you Okay, well going. then when I rented cars somewhere else, they never asked me for an international driver's license. Have mm. they ever asked you for one? I just smile and say, I'm Nikki Noya. Here it is. <laughs> <laughs> All right then. The United States Department of Transportation announced an investigation into whether Southwest Airlines deceived travelers by scheduling more flights in late December than the carrier could handle. Ooh. According to the Associated Press, Transportation Department officials said that they have launched a rigorous and comprehensive investigation into the 16,700 flight cancellations over the last days, the last 10 days of December. Ooh. Okay, we haven't been here to discuss that. That was a mess. Ooh, they had so much <laughs> trouble. But we're not even talking about what happened in January with them. Yeah. I mean, like, what a mess. It, the whole thing has been a complete mess. Quote, our systems and processes became stressed while working to recover from multiple days of flight cancellations across 50 airports in the wake of an unprecedented storm. But then we're learning that their mm -hmm. systems are just antiquated. It Did, can't seem yeah. to handle post-merger, because you know, Southwest and AirTran merged mm -hmm. a few years ago, well, probably like 10 years ago now. Did anyone see the Saturday Night Live spoof that they did about the equipment that Southwest used? No, I haven't like seen it. The old Dell computers with like no. the red thing. Oh no, I need to watch that. <laughs> yeah, just watch that, because that's pretty much what yeah. we're dealing I with. I mean, the employees at Southwest are pretty much begging for equipment upgrades, so hopefully yeah. it comes their way soon and this doesn't happen yeah. again. Welcome to 2023. Exactly, we'll be right back with more of the Jet Set in yeah. 30 seconds. Because it's not the employee's fault. They're not, they have to spend the money to get all the right technology in a quickly expanding I mean, industry. Southwest didn't even know where their planes were. When your metabolism works optimally, it does a great job of supporting overall wellness. Joining us now with insights on how to boost your metabolism post-holiday season and share tips on how to support your daily nutrition with supplements is Dr. Nicole Avina, consultant for Jaro Formulas. Thanks for joining us, Dr. Avina. Oh, happy to be here. 
Why is it important to take the time to reevaluate our health and lifestyle habits post holidays? Well, I think now more than ever, this is a great time to really just have a reset and reevaluate what our health goals are. I think lots of us maybe slacked off a little bit with eating healthy and getting enough exercise over the holidays. And so this is a great opportunity to just make sure that you're getting back on track with your health goals. How can we use scientifically based supplements to support cellular energy production? Well, I often recommend that people start with nutrition. It's so important. But even if you're eating all the healthy foods like fruits and vegetables and getting you know great sources of protein, it's sometimes the case that you can become deficient in one or more nutrient. And that's where supplements can be helpful. And so our brain and our nerves require certain vitamins, like for example, B12, in order to function properly. And B12 is so important because it supports energy production. It also can affect our muscle strength and it can even have an impact on sleep-wake cycles. Are all B12 supplements equal? All B12 supplements are not equal. It's so important to know this. And that's why I really like Jaro's methyl B12, because this is a type of B12 that is recognized by the body. And so it's delivered to your cells more efficiently. It's also better absorbed and retained than other types of B12. It's really just a perfect complement to a plant-based diet. It has the same form of B12 that would be found in animal-based foods, but here you can get it in a vegan chewable form. So it's really easy easy to take too. Where can we go to learn more? So to learn more, you can go to jaro.com. Thanks for being here, Dr. Avina. Thank you. We've got to take another short break, but don't go anywhere. We've still got lots more of the Jet Set to come. Kate Michael started writing about travel with a particular focus on Washington, D.C. while serving as Miss District of Columbia 2006 and competing in Miss America in 2007. Currently, she works as a travel insider and editor for Purist. Kate, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. Well, I, I love watching. <laughs> I'm so happy because we met at a luncheon the other day with our friend Cassandra, who owns Premier Wellness Travel, at, and she was celebrating all things Scottish. And we're sitting next to each other and we had one thing in common and then we had another thing in common and then another and another and now you're here this is amazing well you know great <laughs> travels great people and it all ends up in the same place right okay so tell me a little bit about some of the places that you've been traveling to lately oh goodness <laughs> well you know i just got back from ocala florida where mm -hmm. i was visiting the equestrian hotel i had no idea what to expect uh -huh. the equestrian hotel it's all about horses, right? It was all That's about amazing. horses. So I didn't realize it was part of the uh, the World Equestrian Center, which is one mm -hmm. of the, the largest places to see horse shows. And if you stay here, you can actually watch all of the shows for free while you're staying there. So amazing. I enjoyed the Equestrian Hotel. Um, I recently was evacuated from Fort Myers, Florida, <laughs> when Hurricane Ian came through, because I was there for the Songwriter Festival. I've been to Toronto recently. And, and uh, my next trip, I'm getting excited about going to Key West. So all over the place. My favorite place maybe in the whole world. Really? Have you been there before? I have, but it's been a little bit. Okay, what I like about Key West is that you can do like the crazy party time or you can also kind of just like do, ride your bike, go to the beach, have some fish dip, have some conch fritters and a beer and listen to music. It can, I just love Key West Okay, on so this much. trip, if I do not get to go to Hemingway's house and see those cats you with six toes. Gotta see the six, six toed cats. It has to happen, so that's, that's high on my okay, list. Okay, first up, first up. Okay, tell me a little bit because I watch all of your TikToks and your Instagram. You do, first of all, amazing. And you also highlight awesome places in DC, our town. Tell me a little bit about some of your favorite places in DC you've been to lately. Oh, well, goodness. Obviously, I mean, my, who doesn't love the embassies? The embassies are like one of the most amazing reasons to come to DC, but I am a history nerd. Mm -hmm. So for me, I want to tell people about things to see and do in the city that they might not know yeah. are there, but have been there since this was the, the birthplace and founding of mm -hmm. our democracy, right? Yeah. So um, I enjoy all the small museums, all the civil rights uh, areas that mm -hmm. you can visit visit, great walking trails, great green spaces. Yes, um, and then mm -hmm. if you're just coming to hang out, we've got some of the best hotel lobbies, just really amazing oh, restaurants. Cool. Yes. Um, there's literally everything Have you been to the here. Riggs Hotel that's in like the bank vault, yes, right? Isn't yes. that cool? Very, very, yeah. very cool. They have a great restaurant too. 
what are some of your favorite, now we're gonna get into like, you know, springtime. What are your favorite rooftop bars that we, I, we should start thinking about? Ooh, rooftop yeah. bars. There are so many, I so know. many. Well, you know, I don't, I'm actually not a huge gin fan myself, yeah. but my favorite gin rooftop Ooh. bar is the Betsy in Eastern Market. Ooh. Don't know if you've ever visited there. No. And named, I love gin. Well, then I should go here. The chef yeah. named it after his favorite chicken, which was named Betsy, which is interesting enough. And if that, you know, sparks your interest, then you should go there because it's literally the best place for gin in the whole city. Oh my gosh. Okay. Real quick before we go, because you're a traveler like I am, what are some of your tips for packing, especially as like a lady out about on the town? What are some of the things that you can't miss Mm. I am carry-on only. Mm -hmm. I will, whether I'm going for three weeks or three days, I'm going to only be taking a carry-on. Mm -hmm. So um, I do pack a little bit in advance. I lay out everything. I put all of my outfits together. Oh, you're organized. I, I have to be <laughs> because you're, I'm only going to take a couple of pairs of shoes, so I have to make sure that everything works together. And then uh, kind of like Chanel said, mm -hmm. you know, just put, take everything on and then just take one thing off, right? Uh -huh. So um, then I'll put everything together and probably put some things back uh -huh. in the closet. But I'm, I also am able to do that because I don't take a big roller board, you I just, take a, a duffel yeah. with wheels. Oh, and that good. way they're less likely to take your stuff if they have to and put it underneath because it looks just like a duffel bag. So that's my trick, oh, duffel good. with wheels. Okay, Kate, where can people go and follow all of your amazing adventures? Oh, well, I'm on all of the social channels, mm -hmm. literally all of them at K Street Kate. Um, but I'm really trying to beef up my, uh, my YouTube. So follow me on YouTube at well, K Street Kate YT. I am such a huge fan of all of your adventures. Thank, Thank you, you so much Thank for being you. here. And as soon as you get back from Key West, come back because I want to hear all about it. Absolutely. According to a recent study, nearly 80% of Americans report a high degree of excitement about travel in 2023. Joining us now to discuss travel tips, top destinations, and how Norwegian Cruise Line is helping travelers sail away in 2023 is cruise and travel expert and editor-in-chief of Cruise Critic, Colleen McDaniel. Welcome to the show, Colleen. Oh, thanks so much for having me, Nikki. It's a pleasure to be here. What should people be thinking about before planning their next vacation? Well, first of all, cruising is a terrific value, and I think that's something that everybody should think about. Uh, it includes your meals, your accommodations, your entertainment, and of course, transportation from port to port, so you can literally wake up in a new destination every day. Also, you can cruise virtually anywhere in the world, so people looking to check an item off their bucket list, cruising is a great way to do it. If you're considering heading overseas this summer, take a look at Norwegian Prima. Cruise Critic just named it its best new cruise ship of 2022, in part because of its excellent entertainment, its great dining, and its world-class spa. And let's be honest, a world-class spa sounds really great as we're all prioritizing well-being and self-care. Also, when it comes to travel tips, our top tip is do your research. Visit a site like cruisecritic.com and read reviews from experts and from real cruisers just like you. You can also get tips and tricks that will really help you as you plan your cruise. Second, don't put price as your top consideration. I know that sounds a little counterintuitive, but ultimately you want to find the best cruise line, the best cruise ship for your personality and interest. So once you've picked that cruise, cruise line, cruise ship, familiarize yourself with the destinations and the itineraries that that cruise line offers by heading on over to their website. Norwegian, for example, sails to nearly 400 destinations worldwide. For more information on Norwegian, visit ncl.com. Thank you, Colleen. Great, thank you so much, I appreciate it. There's a weight problem in America and it isn't just affecting humans. Would it surprise you to know that more than half of dogs and 60% of cats are classified as clinically overweight, but 90% of pet parents with an overweight pet don't realize it. Joining us to discuss how we can end pet obesity and a new campaign from Hills are veterinarians from the Nat Geo Wild Show Critter Fixers, Country Vets, Dr. Bernard Hodges, and Dr. Terrence Ferguson. We definitely want to make sure that we don't overfeed our animals because feeding our animals more is not love. You know, there's so many other ways you can show love, like throwing a ball and walking them and give them a little extra love. The annual end obesity campaign by Hills is wonderful for a guy like me and Dr. Hodges who are practicing veterinarians because it's obesity, like you said, is one of those um, illnesses or conditions that we see most in the veterinary hospital. And it can be very difficult sometimes talking to clients about, you know, their patient being obese, you know. But HEALS with their campaign has given us the tool to be able to get this message across. And it's something that they do annually. They've invested a lot of time, a lot of money into the research, into the pet food that we can use to help these animals that are obese. 
it, it can be difficult for owners to assess if their pets have been overweight because a lot of times these animals, um, dogs or cats, they gain weight very slowly and it's not noticed a lot about to the owners. Also, some have long hair and it's just hard for them to tell. But the beauty is, Hills have come up with something that's called the love test. So Dr. Hodges, we're going to give them a little love, but in a little bit different way here. So this love test is L-O-V-E. And that L is you want to locate your pet ribs. The O is you want to observe the body from above. V, you want to view the patient or your baby from the side. And the E is you want to evaluate how you're feeding. So you basically take these uh, measurements or tools that you have compared to the love test that Heels has, and it will let you know whether your baby is ideal weight, um, underweight some, or what we see a lot, obesity. So you can go to impetobesity.com and you can learn a whole lot more about how you can actually use the love test, as well as learn more about Heels Pet Nutrition and ways to control your pet's weight. We've got to take another short break, but don't go anywhere. We've still got lots more of the Jet Set to come. Casey Grant hails from a military family, learning from her parents the love of flying and seeing the world at a young age. After 35 years as one of Delta's first African-American flight attendants, Ms. Grant has published an award-winning book, Stars in the Sky, which tells her journey and other African-American pioneers in aviation as they fought for their civil rights in the sky. Casey, welcome back to the Jet Set. Well, thank you. I'm so happy to be here. Welcome back. <laughs> you were a guest on our show a few years ago. What have you been doing since we last saw you? I have hit the ground running since then. I have published two other books. And my latest thing is creating International Black Aviation Day. And the acronym is IBAD. And that is to honor our Black pioneers in aviation. And so that is what I'm working so desperately to get recognized by, well, at this point, we have a uh, congressional resolution um, in process. So I'm hoping that that will be passed by the end of the year. But uh, I'd like for the schools to recognize my books, the last book in particular, uh, that highlights all these different Black pioneers and their contributions to aviation that we just don't know about. So what inspired you to spearhead International Black Aviation Professionals Day and how did you get it to Congress? Wow, great journey. Um, I, what my brainstorming was that in the very beginning, realizing that the black flight attendants contribution to black a to aviation is not uh, recognized. No one knew anything about the different things that we went through. Uh, as I said, I was among the first black flight uh, Stuart is this book we recalled back then, and breaking the color barrier and the struggles and all the different things that we went through just to get the job. And I felt that people needed to know what we went through. Delta didn't even know some of the things that we went through because we never told Delta. We just handled these uh, different situations on our own and we moved forward. So it was very important to me to get that story out. And then it became important doing my research to know all the different black aviators and their contributions that I didn't know. And so there I feel it's important that children know these heroes and people of color and that we should all know our, our history. So International Black Aviation Day is very, very um, important to me because it helps to get the word out and to honor them. And uh, my publicist who is wonderful and Delta had been very, very instrumental in backing me for my International Black Aviation Day. The airline industry has changed so much since the impact of COVID. Would you encourage people of color to enter this industry? I would encourage everyone. This is the most fantastic job, fantastic life, fantastic opportunity. And yes, things have really changed. Uh, my book, Stars in the Sky, and the reason I named it Stars in the Sky is because at that time, we were on the same level with the models and the uh, movie stars. And so uh, it was glamorous. It was a sophisticated job. Uh, people were proud to be a flight attendant and people respected stewardesses slash flight attendants. And so, yes, it's uh, what better way to, to, to meet people all over the world and to learn different customs and to respect people. And, and I just think it's just the best job in the whole world to be able to travel all over the world. 
And IBAD is February 16th. And how can people observe this day? Well, one way you can do it is I, I have T-shirts that are uh, advertising International Black Aviation Day. So purchase a T-shirt, wear it on that particular day, which is February the 16th. And you can get all the information on my website and you can order your T-shirts. And I would like for everyone to wear it and honor that day. Uh, mm -hmm. Go and please tell your schools about my books, which are the other one is um, Stars and Beyond. I have a coloring book and I also have a... A uh, book that would be excellent in the school system. So here are the other two books that you can also help me to promote the idea and International Black Aviation Day. Contact me if you have any suggestions or would like any help in my trying to get the word out to everyone to celebrate this day. Casey, you are amazing. Thank you so much for joining us. Oh, thank you so much for having me. We got to take one last break, but I've got your dose of travel inspiration still to come, and you don't want to miss it. Wait until you hear this. <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs>